Hi, this is David Smith from Australian Video Camera, and I'm going to show you a simple demonstration of the latest versions of Vasco Street Maps version 10 and Vasco da Gama version 15. Vasco Street Maps and Vasco da Gama work together seamlessly to enable you to make beautiful travel maps anywhere on the planet. And I want to show you just how easy it is to do using the latest versions of this fabulous software from Motion Studios in Germany. This is Street Maps, and when you start, you've got a choice of three map modes. This is the classic map mode here, and that lets you work up to a maximum of 20,000 pixels, which is absolutely ideal for ordinary maps. If you go across to this version, this is the uh, slightly higher version. In this version, the maps are saved in pieces, as you can see in the grid here. Uh, in pieces ranging from 4096 by 4096 to 12288 by 12288 pixels. These can be edited in other programs to suit your needs. And then finally there's this mode here which is for really really large maps broken down into small subsections. The maps are automatically created in the format for Vasco da Gama so there's no need for further conversion and the maps can be used immediately. Mostly I use the classic map mode because it suits my needs perfectly. And what I'm going to do is generate a journey from Sydney to Melbourne in Australia, uh, a simple flight from Sydney to Melbourne, just to show you how these two programs, Street Maps and Vasco da Gama, integrate seamlessly. Here we choose the size of the map, 4320 by 2160, I'm going to use the WGS84, the normal uh, projection, which is very suitable for Vasco da Gama. I want the land areas to be in the uh, SAP map blue marble, and I want the water areas to be, uh, I'm going to use set the depth image dark, which I like. I do want the elevation relief on, and the transparent areas uh, I'm going to leave as none for the moment. You can choose between having the water transparent or both the water and land transparent and there's various ways uh, that this can be used to suit your needs but for the moment I'll have none. I want country borders off, federal borders off and borders on water areas off. I'll leave that as it is for now. So uh, I'll leave all of these further map settings which go into enormous detail as you can see every one of these buttons has uh, a huge array of possibilities and that's marvelous you can you can absolutely tailor this to suit yourself i will have maximum details on at lower resolutions so i just click the map and i get a map of the world generated very fast there it is and i want to zoom in on sydney so i go across to here to the gps select an area using the gps database and I want to go up here to choose Sydney and do a search and there we go Sydney New South Wales that'll be the one and I go OK the map is created because of the way the data is stored in this new version there's much less disk space used to store the files and the calculations are also much much faster so there's our map of Sydney, um, and you can see the detail of all the streets. You can zoom out if you want to, to make a bigger map. So if that's the map that I want, which it is, I want to go to full screen and see the full details. So that'll take a little while longer to, um, to build, dealing with an immense amount of data calculation here. Uh, and uh, it's much, much faster than it used to be. Probably takes about 35 40 seconds to create this map of Sydney. So here's the map uh, which shows enormous amounts of detail. Like I have to scroll across to see the various bits. Um, and there's the action centre of Sydney, there's the Opera House on the point here, and Sydney Harbour Bridge, and the um, outlet to the ocean over here. Uh, so having got all this information now in this amazingly detailed map. I need to save it in a format that will work in Vasco da Gama. So I'll go to the Save Requester. 
and I'm going to go up here and this is Sydney and that map is now saved. The output format as you can see is GeoTIFF format um, and there's no other options with that. It, you have the choice of bitmap, JPEG, PNG, uh, TGA and GeoTIFF and GeoTIFF is the one you want because it's uncompressed and it also contains an XML file which contains the GPS data for the map. So the map aligns itself perfectly in Vasco da Gama. I also want to do a new one. Um, so I'll do a new map. And I'll do the same settings. I want blue marble. I want dark. And I want maximum detail on. And this will give me a map of the world again. This time I want to choose Melbourne. So I've got the city of both Sydney and Melbourne available if I want them in the uh, Vasco da Gama app. And now I go to my selector and I type in Melbourne and I search the whole database and there we go, Melbourne. I'll put Melbourne Airport actually for this one. And now we create the map quite fast to create the map. Uh, if I go to full screen now I want to see how long it takes to do the full screen map. It's um, pretty fast. And there it is. There's our map. And uh, you can see Melbourne Airport is the focus of the map. I'll go back to the preview mode and I'll uh, make it a little bit bigger so it includes Melbourne City, which it now does. And I can move this around by using the shift the area with the mouse. So I'll just go back here. So we get some of Port Phillip Bay coming in here. And there's Melbourne in its uh, preview detail. Now here's Melbourne in its full detail being created. As you can see, it creates very fast. OK, there's the full detail. I'll save the project. Save that and I'll save the map down here. Save the current map. Again, as a GeoTIFF file. And that's all I have to do. The two maps are now ready to be used in Vasco da Gama, created in Vasco Street Maps version 10. And so I can close this down now. I do want to quit. And now I'll open Vasco da Gama version 15, as you can see. I want to create a new project. And here you have some new choices. Uh, we've got the initial choice between the Easy Assist mode, which is the simplest way to get a map going very, very fast. Um, lots of the options are taken care of automatically in the software. And, and so that's a very good way to go if you want to get a quick map going. And then if you want to go further, or if in fact, if you want to work the whole project in expert mode, you can go down here to expert mode and all of the tabs are available. All of the internal workings are controllable. That gives you the most control, but it's also more complex to use. So we'll start off in easy assist mode and then you have another choice now of using either a globe or a flat map and in many cases a flat map is uh, all you need but you have the choice now to choose one or the other normally i work in vasco da gama using the um, the globe because uh, that's what i'm hoping to achieve i'm going to work this in i'm going to go to ultra hd i'm going to go to 4k 50p so Ultra HD, 4K resolution, uh, and all the other variables are adjusted automatically. So you don't need to change those. In fact, it's really best if you don't. So here's our new map. We can see the globe, beautiful rendering of the, the planet, and also a beautiful rendering, an accurate rendering too, of the, um, the night sky behind it. We're in easy assist mode, as you can see up here. We have uh, options for the project settings which I've already set well, yeah that's okay we've got maps we can choose the kind of maps we want um, I'm using blue marble and I've got city names off city lights are on mountains I'll turn on as well and I can import a new map so I'll import my map of uh, 
Sydney version 2 and that it says the file contains geographical coordinates press yes if you would like to use them or no if you'd like to process it manually I'll do it automatically because that's the easy way so Vasco da Gama processes the map and positions it perfectly correctly on the globe according to the GPS data and now I can choose that map this is Sydney Street Maps version 2 that's, so that's now selected and I can choose some options within that it's always visible um, or it fades in or fades out I think I'll make it always visible just so we can see what happens and I also want to do my second map I'll import another map which is the Melbourne map and that also contains the data so we say yes and we prepare the Melbourne map okay that's done so I've now got I'll put my Melbourne version 2 map in and that's now in place and so now I need to go to the starting point of our journey one of the significant differences in version 15 of Vasco da Gama is that you now work in terms of stages and each of the stages uh, has its own properties it can have its own vehicle it can have its own starting and end points its own um, route line all of these are selectable and so you can actually manipulate the stages very easily so we're in stage one up here and the section time is 10 seconds I'll make it a bit longer we'll make it up to um, about 18 seconds I'll make it 20 just so I've got time to there we go 20 seconds okay so now I'm going to add our starting point which is Sydney so I search just as I did in street maps I'm searching the Vasco da Gama database so I'll go for Sydney and click OK and the map spins around and places Sydney at the center of the screen now I'm going to do the same thing again to create our second point in this simple journey and this is Melbourne Mecklebourne let's make it Melbourne and I search again once again the map will now spin around when I choose Melbourne and we can now see that there are two points on the map the starting point always indicated with the white arrow and the active point now in green the latest one we've added which is Melbourne it's important not to touch the screen because if you touch the screen anywhere you'll add a th another point automatically and then you have to go back and undo that but now I can zoom in using the mouse wheel which is the simplest way to do it and you can see beautiful detail here um, we'll go right into choose Sydney we'll go right in here and now we can see the properties of this stage uh, are available I want acceleration and deceleration to happen because that just means my vehicle will accelerate nicely up to speed and then slow down again so here we choose our vehicle and I'm selecting the object so I go here to aircraft in the main directory and here I can choose the kind of aircraft I'm going to choose an A380 because we're choosing aircraft that are Airbus aircraft here so I'll choose an A380 and I want to choose the appearance at the moment is neutral I want to choose a Qantas livery so now we can see we've got the Qantas red tail and the flying kangaroo on the tail and I go OK so let's see what happens if we do a preview of this at this stage I'll just save the file and now we'll do a trial fly through and we'll see what 
has happened. So there's our little aircraft flying down over the Blue Mountains, over Kosciuszko, and down onto Melbourne. And you can see Melbourne's street map is visible here, and the word Melbourne has been partly blanked out, and I can explain that later. We cancel the preview mode, even though it's looking quite good. One thing we can do is change the route of the flight by just doing this, and we can make us our flight come down over the uh, the ocean and come in from the east towards Melbourne uh, and a nice line up to come in from the east like that and there's a few things I can change I can, I've selected the object which is our uh, Airbus A380 I want the calming movement uh, low the calming movement simply smooths out these little changes here if you have lots of these changes of course it can get a bit jagged and so the calming movement up here um, can do a very effective job of smoothing out those irregularities I won't have a fade oh yeah I'll fade in and fade out over two seconds you can have the motion mode either off or you can change it to flight mode or now in the new version you can do motorcycle mode which helps your little motorcycle, if you choose that, lean into corners just the way a motorcycle does. Um, but I want flight mode for my aircraft. So there it is, and the flight altitude, well, we'll see how it looks. Um, and that's all we need to do for the minute. Uh, let's have a look at how this previews. There we go, and now, because I've got flight mode on, it gains some altitude, turns around, banks nicely around, and comes in to land very nice so that's all working nicely um, let's see do I want an object at the waypoint select the object I can choose Oceania objects and so I can choose a whole range of objects I want uh, Australia I want Sydney and I'll choose the Sydney Tower now if I did it differently it's possible to use these new options the special settings which lets you import all objects of this type and in their real size on the map so you can import here's the Sydney Tower Sydney Cricket Ground the Star um, Sydney Town Hall Sydney Opera House and so on there's a huge number there's hundreds of buildings all available for Sydney an enormous number of uh, options for you so I want to have a whole range of buildings in both Sydney and Melbourne and to do that I have to go into expert mode which I do up in the top corner here so I'll go into expert mode I can't go back to, to easy assist mode once you've done this you have no choice you have to stay in expert mode and here you can see we've now got all of the options available project maps route objects texts camera optical effects tools and export so when we start in expert mode we've got our head object is here and that's our aircraft our jet aircraft i want to go up to the top and choose uh, free object settings and now if i go add a new object and I go into the Oceania section and I go through again to Sydney there we go Sydney now I have the option to import all of the objects of this type which means all of this what probably 120 uh, buildings for Sydney so I'll do that the objects are loaded and they're all geo tagged so they all go into their perfect positions on the map and to see this we have to go in and zoom right in on the map and we'll do just that bring it over here a bit go right into the map and if we tip it over you can now see very clearly that all the buildings are visible and we can go right in and see the detail of the buildings and they're as you can see all in their correct places on the streets facing the right way 
Um, it's really quite amazing uh, what's been done. There's the Sydney Tower. You can highlight each of these and find out what they are. Um, but um, I'll go back out a little bit. The detail's amazing. Uh, and you can also notice something here that the water, I'll just go in here and you can see that the water is undulating gently because we've got some wave action happening. So to adjust the water, which is probably a bit humongous for the minute, um, I will go back into optical effects and I've got now various choices. I can change the light and shadow settings. I can change uh, orientation guide, compass rose, special effects. And here I've got uh, settings for the ocean. And so I've got uh, water waves are on and the wave height is 100%, but I'll take that back to quite a lot less. I'll take that back to about 25%. And the wave direction is 90 degrees. It's coming in from the east. And that's okay. Um, the water reflections are high. And so I can also adjust clouds. So I want lightly cloudy. I can use lightly cloudy, heavy clouds or stormy clouds. Let's see what they do. If I go to stormy clouds, we get these very big storm clouds coming across. Um, but I don't want those. I think I'll just go for lightly cloudy. And that's just fine. What I do want to do is use this bit here. First of all, you can uh, use this little button here to take your view from directly above and this other one with the north point on it turns the map so that it does point true north. Now you can turn off various things. You can turn off text for example. You can see how the text appears or disappears and there's a few more things you can do with the text which I'll now do. I go up to texts and one of the things you notice is that the, um, the text is disappearing under the map so I want to raise the altitude of that text for Melbourne so I just do that and raise it quite a bit until it's very clear of everything. And then I also want to adjust the view. And I have this option of face to camera, which is currently off. And I can do it with either three axes or two axes. I'll do it with three axes. And now this means that uh, which, wherever the camera is facing, the Melbourne word will face the camera. And I'll do the same to Sydney, if we go back to the start, uh, I'll do the same for Sydney. We'll raise the, um, we'll go to the position. We'll raise the altitude quite a lot as, again. And I'll also change the view to three axes. And now I want to do some camera stuff. So we'll go to the camera view. Okay, if I go into manual camera mode up here, I now have more options available for my camera settings. So as I go through, I can go through here and I'm noting the time on this. Now, about here is where we start to lose the aircraft. So I want to insert a new camera point here and I want to move across this way so the aircraft stays in view and I have to f take a flash picture of that. And then we can go all the way through and it stays in the field of view. So I'll save that and now we'll do a fly through. Now the aircraft is staying in view all the time. Coming across. Okay. Now I have to uh, go into uh, objects and I have to go to free objects and I have to import a new object and I need to go into not Sydney but Melbourne. There we go. And here we go. There's Melbourne. Eureka Tower, Etihad Stadium, Melbourne Cricket Ground, the Melbourne Arts Centre, 
Rod Laver Arena, all these well-known objects, and now I want to import all objects of this type. So I'm going to populate Melbourne with all of these wonderful buildings. And there they are. We'll just go across to the city and move in on them. And you can see they're all in the correct places. There's the uh, MCG. All the buildings are in their correct places on our map of, of Melbourne. So now having got from Sydney to Melbourne in our aircraft, I'd like to do something a little different. And um, I'm going to go through to Melbourne and there's the Melbourne scenery right there and our green X marks the spot and this point is now going to become the starting point for stage two I'm going to add a new stage now so we're now on stage two I've got a choice of two uh, I can choose stage one or stage two stage two is now going to have a different vehicle it's going to have a motorbike so I go to objects and the head object is going to be a 3D object. I'm going to select the object and it's a motorbike. It's a red BMW 1200RT. So I've chosen my object, the motorbike. I've just gone into the um, object properties and I've got the calm movement. I'll put calm movement on low. I'll put it in motorcycle mode and now I'm going to take a trip along the coast to the town of Warrnambool in Western Victoria so we'll go back here and we'll go to uh, we have to set up the next route so we add another one and I'm going to put in Warrnambool see if that's in, in the database and there it is Warrnambool Victoria Australia fantastic so we get to Warrnambool and one of the things that people go to Warrnambool for is to see the whales so let's go into our objects and let's go drag and drop the new feature which allows us to drag and drop very very easily wild animals I'll go to wild animals yeah we'll go to the Antarctic or the Southern Ocean and we'll choose a humpback whale and we'll drag it and drop in there and we'll change the size uh, to something more respectable for a whale better put it in the water and we'll have another one we'll have two whales there and on the land we'll have um i'll have an albatross flying over the land as well and finally i have to do my map of uh, warrnambool city so i go to my database and i go in here warrnambool search there it is and the map's created and there's Warrnambool and I'll zoom out a little bit there we go that's good and um, now I want to go to the full screen map so this will take a about half a minute to generate the uh, fully detailed map so there's the fully detailed map of Warrnambool um, and uh, it's uh, a lovely representation of the town and there's the uh, the beach where the whales uh, appear this is Logan's Beach along here and that's where we expect to find southern right whales in October or possibly humpback whales at other times and so now I'll save this map uh, save current map as GeoTIFF of course Warrnambool save if I go now into 
Vasco da Gama. Now I can go to Warner Ball here and I go to Maps. I'm going to import my new map, which is Warner Ball. And that's all good. Yes, I do want to use the automatic settings. So the map is created. Going pretty well. And now I can select my Warner Ball map to be in the correct position at Warner Ball. And let's just have a quick look at that. There we are. And I just wonder something interesting now. I wonder if I go to free object settings and I go into add a new object and I want to go into uh, Oceania and I want to go to right down to Warrnambool and it's not there, oh, that's New Zealand, hang on, Australia no, Warrnambool isn't in the database unfortunately so I haven't got any extra buildings to add for Warrnambool so I'll cancel that and so having generated a route that goes right through from Sydney to Melbourne and then around the coast to Warrnambool we are now in a position to review this here goes our aircraft I'm going to alter the altitude of the aircraft a bit but I like that view against the sky coming down now into Melbourne Airport fairly steep descent and now we change to our motorbike and race across town then off into the bush around the coast pretty bumpy road as you can see and there we go into the town of Warrnambool and we come out and there is our final view. So we save and now we're in a position to render the whole process. So we go up to export and I want to go to QuickTime and I want to go to QuickTime H264 which is the best most efficient uh, use of uh, materials. I'll go to very good quality which will be just fine and uh, now I'll just uh, set that to render uh, this is now Sydney Melbourne Warrnambool H264 so I know which version it is and that's now going to render which will take quite some time to do uh, it's, a, it's a lengthy video now so I'll leave that go and I'll have a cup of coffee and come back and uh, see how it looks so there's a quick overview of how this system uh, works the two apps Vasco Street Maps 10 and Vasco da Gama 15 work together seamlessly to provide extremely accurate positioning of objects and maps and uh, then they finally allow you to output your video and you've produced a professional video in a very short time and it looks great.